Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1417. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about ranking. And we're going to do it for unit profit and total profit. Not only that, but we're going to do the ranking for products and then products within manufacturer. Now, in this video, we're going to use Excel spreadsheet functions. Then in 1418, we'll do pivot tables. Then in 14119, we'll see how to do it with DAX formulas. Now, we have a table with our transactions with units and profit. Then we have our product table that gives us the price, standard cost, and manufacturer. Over here is where we're going to create our formulas. And this is actually the finished version. We need to calculate total profit for each product, and then rank all the profits, and then rank within each manufacturer the individual profits. Then we'll do profit per unit and rank all the profits, and then ranking within manufacturer. Now let's go over to the sheet 1497. Now I'm actually going to hide some columns so we can zoom in and see everything up close. So I'm going to highlight the columns and right click hide. So we're going to start off with total profit for each product. Well, this formula is straightforward. We're going to use the sum ifs function. Now the sum range, that's the range with all the numbers we want to add. Now I've already converted these to Excel tables by going up to insert and clicking on the table button. So once we have this as an Excel table, that profit field name at the top, if we hold our cursor right above it and we see that downward pointing black arrow, when I click, it puts the entire column into our function. Now, that's called table formula nomenclature, or structured references. It always has the table name, and then in square brackets, the field name. Now I type a comma. The criteria range, well, I need to look through the entire product column. So with my black downward pointing arrow, click. There's the table. There's the field name, comma. The criteria, well, for this one row right here, I only want some ifs to add up quad products. As a relative cell reference, now I can close parentheses. Control-Enter, and there's that little fill handle in the lower right-hand corner. I move my selection cursor, and when I see my crosshair or angry rabbit, I click and drag. I go to the last cell, hit F2. I'm verifying that all of the cell references are working correctly. Now we need to rank. Well, there's a great function in Excel. There's actually a couple different functions we can use when we have a single number. We want to rank that number against all of the others. Now, actually, I just noticed when I copied this down, notice I copied the formula and the formatting. The smart tag is still here, so I'm going to click on it and say, please fill that without formatting. All right, so we need to rank this individual item against all of the others. And there are a few different functions we can see in our dropdown. Rank, that's the original rank function before rank.eq and rank average. These two functions came in Excel 2010. Anytime you see that little yellow triangle, that means compatibility mode. It's there for backwards compatibility. But we want to use one of these two functions moving forward. Now, rank and rank.eq are exactly the same. When they see a tie, like a three-way tie for third, all three positions would get three, three, three meaning third place for all three amounts. Rank.average would simply average three, four, five. And so each person would get four. Now, actually, if you scroll down below, I have an example of how rank.eq, rank.average, and count ifs, which we'll see later, ranks when there's ties, because we don't have any ties up here. All right, so we're going to use the rank.eq tab. Now, number, that's the particular number you want to take and rank against the others, comma. The reference, I'm going to highlight all of the numbers, F4 key to lock that since we're copying it down, comma. And then you can select from the dropdown either descending or ascending. We want descending. And guess what? That is the default. 
Anytime you see an argument in a screen tip with those square brackets, it means if you know what the default is, you can leave this argument out. And I know what it is. I'm going to backspace and leave that argument completely out so it will automatically do descending. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now I can come to my fill handle, and when I see my Angry Rabbit, double click and send it down. Immediately come to the Smart Tag and say Fill Without Formatting. Now I'm going to go to the last cell in F2 to verify that the cell references are working. So we can clearly see that Quad is first in terms of total profit, and Darnell Fast Catch is second in terms of total profit. Now what if we want to rank within manufacturer, right? So here we want to rank these three items against these three items because they're for the manufacturer gel boomerangs. Well, there's no rank if function equals rank if. Uh-oh, that one doesn't exist. But no problem. We can use the count ifs for ranking or ranking with conditions. Now, what do we want to do? We want to isolate these three items. And there's the criteria for isolating gel boomerangs. So for the criteria range, I highlight the entire column of manufacturers, F4 to lock it, comma. The criteria is this particular manufacturer as a relative cell reference. And what this will do is it will isolate these three items. So when we put total profit in, these will already be isolated. Now, comma, how are we going to rank these? Well, for criteria range, we're going to put all of the profits in, F4 to lock it, comma. And then we have to ask the question, of these three items, how many of you are greater than? And comparative operators in count if, sum if, and similar functions always have to have their comparative operator in double quotes. Then we join it using the ampersand or shift 7. That's the join symbol, and I'm going to join it to this. Now, notice what this question does. How many are greater than that? Zero. When I come down to the next one, since we're already isolated these three, how many are greater than that? One, two. When I come down to this one, how many are greater? Simply one. Now, close parentheses. It won't quite give us what we want, but, but almost. Control Enter. Now, when I double click and send it down, watch this. I'm going to show you terribly useless keyboard shortcut. I hardly ever use it. But we can open the Smart Tag with Shift Alt F10 and then down arrow to fill without formatting and Enter. Now notice 0, 1, 2. It really should be 1, 2, 3. So all we have to do is add 1. Now notice when we copy this down, it messed up the formatting. But if you have the entire column highlighted and in the active cell you hit F2, since we need to plus 1 for all of the formulas in this column, now that the formula is edited, if I Control Enter, it will copy the formula down and leave the formatting intact. Control Enter to populate that edited formula down. And now we get 1, 2, 3. So we're ranking the profits within the manufacturer. And that doesn't depend on sort at all. We could completely sort this in a different order, and it would work. Now, our next task is to calculate profit per unit. That means I have to unhide the product table. So I'm going to highlight D to L, right click, unhide, and there we go. The table is unhidden. Now, what are we going to do? Well, for quad, in order to calculate profit per unit, I need to retrieve retail price, and then subtract the standard cost. No problem. That means we can do 2VLOOKUP. So equals VL tab. The item we're looking up, that's the quad product, comma. The table, I'm actually going to highlight the entire inside of the table. And then table formula nomenclature just puts the table name, comma. Now column index. I'm counting on my fingers, 1, 2. So retail price, I need to put a 2 for column index. So I simply type that in, comma. We're using exact match because our lookup table is not sorted for the first column. So I put false or 0, close parentheses. Now that's V looking up just the retail price. So I'm going to copy this, Control-C in edit mode. 
Come to the end, type minus and control V. And guess what? The standard cost is in the third column. So I simply highlight and type a 3. That formula will work. Control Enter. Now watch this. Here's yet another way to highlight and avoid messing up with the formatting. Before I click in the last cell, I'm going to hold Shift to highlight all of them. Then I'm going to hit the F2 key to put it in edit mode, and Control Enter to populate it all the way down. There's the profit per unit. Now we can rank equals, and we're going to use equals rank.eq tab. There's the number. I left arrow, comma, left arrow, control shift down arrow, F4 to highlight that column and lock it. Close parentheses because we're using the default descending, control enter. Double click and send it down. Shift alt F10, down arrow, down arrow, and enter. Now we're similarly going to have to use count ifs for rank within manufacturer. So equals count ifs. The criteria range, the entire manufacturer column. F4, comma, this particular manufacturer as a relative cell reference, comma. Here's our profit per unit, F4, comma. In double quotes, how many of you are greater than joined to this actual particular profit? Remember, since these three items are already isolated, now we're going to get how many are greater than this biggest one? Zero. So close parentheses and plus 1. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Control Alt F10, down arrow, down arrow, and Enter. Wow, so that was a lot of fun with adding up total profit with some ifs, ranking using rank.equivalent, then ranking with a condition or criteria using count ifs. We use two VLOOKUPs for calculating total profit, and then rank EQ and count ifs. All right, next couple videos, we'll see how to create the same report with pivot tables and then with DAX formulas. All right, see you next video.